Hello, I'm Mr. Norgren, the facilitator here at Studio E16. In this first video series, you'll be learning the foundations of Adobe Photoshop. The content is geared more towards digital photographers, but graphic designers and digital artists will also find the information useful. At the beginning of each video, I will preview the terms that you need to write down in your sketchbook and define on your own. This first video is titled Creating an Identity, and you will learn the art element of line and the principle of contrast, the type tool along with serif and sans serif fonts, and then Photoshop's layers, character palette, and layer styles. All right, let's get started. So I'm using the 2015.5 version of Photoshop CC on the Mac platform. If you're on Windows, you will have to translate the keyboard shortcuts. Today you will begin the creative process of designing a logo that you will use for your photography business. So now pause the video and get out your sketch. Actually, don't pause the video until I tell you what to do first. The first step to creating an identity is to define your target audience. So start off by answering a few questions such as, what is the age range of my audience? And what genre of photography will I be focusing on? For example, if it is your dream to become a wedding photographer, your primary audience will be engaged couples between 20 and 40 years old. Many wedding photographers either use their entire name or their initials for their business name. With my font choice, I'm paying attention to the art element of line and the art principle of contrast. With my full name sample logo here, I've selected a serif font that has a good balance of thick and thin lines and also contains diagonals that imply movement. Thin and curvy lines typically convey sophistication and elegance and thick and bold lines will convey strength and security. For my sample logo with my initials here, I chose a sans serif font that was more bold. For the sake of learning, I would like you to create something similar to these two using your first and last name with the word photography as well as one with your initials and the words photo and video. All good logos will have contrast with light and dark values, so you will only use black and white. Someday you will need to use a single color logo for circumstances such as embroidering your logo on a shirt, so you should always design with one color. Creating your logo is a creative process, which means you should spend time sketching before using Photoshop. When designing the Studio E16 logo, I created several possibilities, and you will do the same. As you complete these video lessons, you will learn techniques to create your final logo. Okay, so now it is time to pause the video and open your sketchbooks. Welcome back. Hopefully you have a few ideas on paper, and now you're ready to start choosing fonts for your two practice logos. So start off by opening Photoshop. Mine's already open, obviously. If you don't see it in the dock here, the PS logo, you could go ahead and find it in the Applications folder on your computer. Next step is to choose File New from the menu bar right up here. And you could also use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command N. In this new document dialog box, I'm going to put in 20 inches for the width and then 16 inches for the height. If you want to flip-flop these two, you can. And the resolution, I will put it at 300. Next step is to choose the type tool and then go ahead and click on your canvas and enter your first and last name. Don't worry about the size or color yet. We're going to adjust that soon. Unless, of course, the color is white and then you want to be able to see white on white, obviously. So I'll go ahead and show you that right now, just in case uh, somebody is stuck like that. So right now my text is highlighted. If the color up here is white, like this, you would not be able to see your text. So you'd try to, this is kind of tricky, find where your text is and highlight, oh, there we go, right here, there it is. I'm going to highlight it. I think I might have missed a letter there. I'm going to highlight that invisible text. And then I'm going to click on this little white swatch at the top here. And click and drag till it stops in the corner there. Or I can make it stop over in this corner. You've got white up here and black down there and then click OK. So as long as you've got black text there, uh, we should be good to go. OK, now if your text is not highlighted yet, go ahead and highlight it, and we're going to change the size of it. 
So the size is right up here in the tool options bar right at the top of the screen. We've got the size. I could use the drop down menu. It only goes to 72. So I could type in a number here. I could highlight it and type something in. Or I prefer to just uh, click and drag on these two little letter T's and drag it up until I get the right size. And that looks about right. Okay, uh, eventually you're going to be able to choose other colors, but uh, just having black on white will provide us with a good high contrast one color logo to start with. So now with the text still highlighted, click in the font list right here, and you could toggle through the pre-installed fonts and see if you could find something that you like. You can also use the drop down menu like I'm doing right now, or you can just click inside Let me go to a font here. You could also just click inside here where it highlights the text and then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to toggle through some fonts. If you don't see anything that you like, you could always download uh, some fonts on some of the free font websites. So there are two main differences between fonts. They can either be serif or sans serif. Remember those words? Did you define them yet? Serif fonts have feet like my full name logo. Let's find that. It's not up here, so I could click on these two little lines. There's my full name logo. So this is serif fonts, where I've got the tiny little feet down there. Let me zoom in on those for you with this zoom tool. So you could see the little feet at the bottom of the font. And then sans serif fonts don't have feet like this logo. There's no feet at the bottom of the letters. Okay, next step, let me go back to my untitled document here. And the next step is to choose the move tool. Move tool is right over here. And the shortcut for that is the letter V. Now be careful when you're selecting different tools because if you have your text still highlighted like this and then you try to press the letter V, it might try to put in the letter V and replace your text there. So I always like to either click this check mark to say that I'm done with the type tool or you can just click on the move tool and that will also tell Photoshop that you're done with the type tool. Okay, so to move this around, what you're going to do is uh, click on the words and just move around. And I usually like to keep this box up in the top left of your screen. See where I'm clicking right now? There we go. I keep that checked uh, just so I could click right on my font and then move it around. Because eventually you're going to have more layers that I'll explain about later. Okay, so now that you have something on your canvas, it's a good idea to save right in the beginning so you don't lose any um, work that you've been working on. So go ahead and choose File, Save, or you could do Command S is the uh, shortcut. And then what we're going to do is find uh, your Documents folder over here on the left. Go to Documents, and then in the bottom left of your screen or of your window here, click on New Folder. And this new folder will be titled your last name, not just the word last name, but your last name. So type in your last name. Can't even spell my last name. Type in your last name and the word video lessons. If you want to put spaces in there, that's fine too. Uh, however you want to do it. So last name video lessons, click create. So now I have a folder called Norgren video lessons in my documents folder. And I'm going to change this name to last name and then VL1. So Norgren and then VL1. And then also call this the full name logo. And then click save. Okay, next what you're going to do is use the keyboard shortcut to choose the type tool again. Hopefully you remember that. If you don't, I'll go ahead and just click OK here. If you don't remember it, uh, you could rewind the video. So there's the type tool. And then now I'm going to click for a second line of text. Now this is where you have to be careful. See what happens with my cursor here? If I go too close to this line of text, it's just an I-beam and that would add to this layer. But if I go down a little further, I get a little box around my text or my cursor. So make sure you have a little box around your cursor and then click again and then type in the word photography. And don't worry about the placement for it yet. Uh, we're going to move that next. Okay, when you type, uh, we're going to now move uh, this layer a little bit. 
So I'm going to go ahead and see the two layers in the layers palette, which is right down here in the bottom right. So I've got the background layer of white, my first layer that has my name, and then this is just saying layer one because I haven't clicked the checkbox yet. So I'll go ahead and click the uh, checkbox to say that I'm done with this. And now I can get the move tool, which is the letter V, and I can move this text around a little bit. Okay, next thing we're going to do is adjust the uh, spacing of this word. So in the menu bar up at the top of the screen, you could click on window and then go down to character to display the character palette. Uh, you might also see this little logo right down here um, that shows the character palette too. If your character palette uh, gets in the way of your text, here's a little trick you can do. You can click on the word character on this tab here and drag it right up to one of the other boxes. So there's some space up here with the color and swatches. And now I've got all my character options up here. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is grab the type tool, the letter T, and I'm going to highlight my word photography. And then over here in the character palette, we've got some settings we could change, and I'm going to tell you guys about tracking. Tracking right here is also known as letter spacing. If I move my mouse onto that little logo and keep it there for a second, Photoshop will tell me what it is. So I could adjust the tracking in a few ways. I could either use the drop down menu and enter something in here. Uh, I could highlight this text and I could change it um, to any number I want. Or I can just, uh, like I did with the size of the font, I could click and drag on this logo and adjust it that way, which I like doing the best. So I could adjust the size of it let me go ahead and make the uh, font size a little bit smaller. And then I could stretch the uh, text out a little bit too to make it match my little sample one. Oh, it's a little too far. So that looks close enough. You could spend some more time with it to make it the way you want it to. Okay, next what we're going to do, we're almost done here. I'm going to experiment with some layer styles. So let me click the check mark here up at the top of the screen. And now I've got my little logo here and I've got two layers. Uh, layer styles, most of them you would never use for a logo, but they're good to know if you ever need to create some web or app graphics. So down here in the layers palette, at the bottom of it, there's a little logo with an FX. See down here where I'm spinning around? This little FX logo shows me all the different layer styles. So I'll go ahead and start off with uh, stroke. And right now it's a white stroke, which you can't see on a white background. So I'm going to change the color to something you can see. And then click OK. The size is pretty big, so I can uh, change the size right up here with this slider and make it a little bit smaller. And I could do any of the other layer styles too. So if I want to put a shadow on here, uh, I could click on Drop Shadow. This is where you have to be careful. Sometimes people just click the checkbox to do a drop shadow, and it gave you the shadow. But you could see up here where it still says stroke. So a little tip, what you have to do is actually click on the word drop shadow. And now you get all the functions for drop shadow. You could play around with the sliders here or do what I like to do and just click inside your canvas and drag it wherever you want. And you could see the shadow moving around. So you could put the shadow where you want it. And you could change some other settings up here. So you could experiment with that too. There are a bunch of other ones. Uh, that I want you to experiment with, um, but don't. Uh, we won't be using these for our final logo, but uh, go ahead and play around for now. A couple other things that I'd like to show you. Let's say you wanted to have these same layer styles on the other layer. Here's a cool trick. You can uh, click on this layer, and if you hold down the right click, you could either right click or you could control click on the Mac, and you bring up a bunch of options. Uh, the only two that I'm going to show you right now is copy layer style right down here. You can click copy layer style and just like copy and paste with anything else. I can now click on this layer and then right click or control click and choose paste layer style. And it gives me the same layer styles that I already had there. So you wouldn't have to remember all the details that you did before. Uh, finally, uh, some layer stacking since we have two layers here. Let's say you wanted to have photography behind uh, the Y in Ryan Norgren. I could go ahead and click on this layer and drag it above the other layer and it drops it there. So now this 
lion is in front of photography. Okay, so what you can do now is save this, Command S, and the window won't pop up again because we already did a save earlier. That will just update your save. And then finally what you're going to do is make a second document, Command N. You could do the same size and you're going to do the initials logo. So you're going to make something that looks like this, the initials logo. So go ahead and play with the type tool. You could play with the uh, tracking and then the layers and also the layer styles here. So when you're ready with uh, this next document, let me just do something quick here so you could see what you're going to do. Let me put in a letter here. When you're ready to save your second document, just do Command S and it should pop up the uh, last place that you visited. If you can't find it, you could always go back to your documents, find your last name video lessons folder, and then you're going to name this one very similar. Last name and then VL1 and this is your oops, VL1 and this is your initials logo. And then click save. So you'll have those two uh, saved in your folder. And now we are all set. So great job. All right, you're off to a great start. You've learned the art element of line and the principle of contrast. You've learned about Photoshop's type tool and the difference between serif and sans serif fonts. You've learned about layers. You've learned how to adjust tracking in the character palette. And finally, you've played around with Photoshop's layer styles. In the next video, you'll be learning how to improve your logo with some more customization. And once again, I'm Mr. Norgren, and I encourage you to always be present, professional, and polite with all your future business encounters. Oh wait, one more thing. I've put together a little slideshow at the end of this video uh, with some photographs that are focused on line and contrast. So stay tuned a little longer. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.